So today I'm going to be talking about advice to juniors in high school. So I'm just talking about some things that I did that were helpful and then also some things reflecting back that I wish I had done. So take all of this with a grain of salt. I'm not a college advisor or anything like that, obviously. This is just my thoughts and you might completely disagree with them and that's okay. I have six main tips so we can get started. The first tip is think of the person who will be reading your applications. So put yourself in the mindset of someone who's working at this school. So for example, at Barnard, they're gonna get what? 10,000 applications and so someone's gonna be sitting down at a table with your application and they're gonna have a minute maybe for like a first impression. And a mistake I think that a lot of high schoolers make is thinking that they have to be involved with anything and everything under the sun. So on your resume, you put president of the Spanish club, captain of my soccer team, volunteered at the animal shelter, um, was on the math team, blah, blah, blah. You list a million things and you put it all on your resume and you go, this is who I am. I'm all of these different aspects, like so impressive. But when, for example, an admissions officer at Barnard is reading your, your whole resume, you know, they are looking at it and being like, well, who is this person? What exactly are they interested in? And it seems like they have their, their foot in, you know, a million different things. And then when they go to, you know, tell their colleague about you, how are they going to summarize you? Like, you need to think of your 10 second elevator pitch. You need to think of what would someone say to summarize my application? And if they can't summarize it easily, you're making their job harder and they're less likely to feel inclined to admit you basically is how I thought about it. Like in a nutshell, it's, it's not as impressive to be doing a million things if that's not genuinely who you are. Nobody wants to admit a student who did things just to pad their resume because in actuality, they wanna see what you're genuinely interested in. So focus your interests on one or two things because in real life, most people aren't, aren't really interested in that many things and you want to present them on a silver platter with a focus with your, like I said, your 10 second elevator pitch. You wanna make their job easy. The admissions officers want to see who you actually are. They don't wanna see the most totally involved person in everything. The second tip is about letters of rec. You need one or two letters of rec, I think for the common app. One piece of advice is to start kind of early with that, with forming relationships with teachers. So what you don't wanna do is be asking a teacher who totally doesn't know you at all, who's like, you were in my Chem 1 class or whatever, like, who are you? That's the unideal situation, obviously. So, you know, even in your sophomore year, if you can, or like I said, early in your junior year, start forming those relationships with your teachers. Whether it be just saying hello to them every day, participating in their class actively, like, you don't need to get an A plus in their class. You just need to stand out in their mind as someone who they actually know. Make sure they know your name, make sure they know you're a hard worker, all that kind of stuff. Cause when you lay that groundwork, it's way less awkward to ask for a letter of rec when it's a teacher that you have a personal connection with. And I think the letters of rec can be stressful if you leave it to the end and you're like, shoot, I don't even know who I would ask, like which teacher even really knows me. But if you're laying that groundwork, it's totally not awkward at all. You can, you know, ask them months in advance. So not only do you want to lay the groundwork early for a relationship, but you want to make sure you're asking them with enough time in advance because they're doing you a favor and no teacher wants to be approached three days before your application are due with you in a tizzy like, can you write me a letter of rec? Tip number three is pretty obvious. I thought about not putting this one in, but take practice SAT and ACT tests. Take them early, take them often if you can afford it. I know that's a big thing. I know some schools have programs where you can take a free test. Some of them don't. Try to see if you can get the fee waived, if that's going to be an issue for you somehow. Um, but obviously, like the more you take the test, in theory, the better you'll get. And you can also super score, which is where you take the best score from each one of your tests. So if you do really well on writing on one test, you take that score then you take reading from another one. So basically it can't hurt you to do the test more than once and start early 
so you have lots of scores to choose from. The next one is kind of semi-obvious too, but it's start thinking about your Common App essay early and workshopping it a million times. Like, you should have a hundred different drafts by the time you're done with your essay. And I don't even mean a draft of like one topic. You can draft out lots of different personal statement essays. So if you have three ideas of what you want to write about, write all three early on and then send it to your friends, send it to your family, send it to a peer that you trust. Um, ask a teacher. My AP English teacher offered our junior year to workshop some of our essays and it was really helpful and honestly I think you'd be surprised by how many people are willing to read your work and give you feedback. So don't be afraid to try different topics for your essay, ask people for honest feedback, and 100% make sure there are no spelling or grammatical errors in your essay. Um, and yeah, just the, the earlier you start thinking about that stuff, the less stressful it will be. Same with supplemental essays. Say Barnard is your top choice. Look up what the supplemental essays are and start thinking about them way ahead of time because nothing is more stressful than feeling like you don't have enough time to do something. This is not the time to procrastinate. Give yourself ample time to think through all your ideas, to workshop things. The more drafts, the better it's going to be, and the more different like sets of eyes you can get on your work, the less likely you are to have like a spelling or grammatical error, because that will honestly definitely reflect pretty poorly on you. So really make sure you read, rewrite, read, rewrite, do it a million times if you have to. Um, and start early so that you're not feeling like there's a, a time crunch. So this one I know won't be possible depending on where you live, but do a campus tour if possible. So you want your name on the list of students who toured the campus. And basically I thought of this tip because I was thinking about how my older sister was waitlisted at the college she wanted to go to, but she had visited the campus twice and so in my mind, say there's 50 people on the waitlist, the admissions team is going to narrow that waitlist down somehow. And perhaps one way they're going to do it is by looking at demonstrated interest in the school. So if you're waitlisted at a school and they have no record of you ever touring or reaching out to know more about the school, you're not going to get that spot. So say it's not feasible for you to physically go in person and get your name on the list of students who toured campus. Say you live in California and you're interested in Barnard and you know, you can't afford to go visit, which is totally understandable. What you can do is look at some of the virtual um, tour elements that colleges will have, look up videos, whatever it may be, and then email the admissions office, I guess would be the best thing, and just say, thank you. Just write them a nice email, say, hey, I'm a student who lives far away or it wasn't possible financially or otherwise for me to come visit in person. And I just wanna say, I totally appreciate the um, opportunities you gave us to be able to see the campus. And I really think it's, it's helped me get a feel for the campus. And I'm really looking forward to applying now because it looks like a place that I would really thrive at. Whatever, you can fluff it up however you want. Don't expect a response, but know that you now have a paper trail of demonstrated interest. So if you can't visit in person, look online, write an email or whatever it may be, and just saying how much you appreciate that you could virtually tour the campus. You have to think about worst case scenario, you get you know, waitlisted or deferred to the regular applicant pool if you go early. Now they can look up Sally Smith, Oh, look at this email she sent. She was totally interested. What a nice email. She seems like such a nice person, such a passionate person. She went out of her way to reach out. Um, and yeah, you just have that paper trail and that's gonna be an advantage over someone else who maybe didn't do that or who didn't tour the campus or whatever it may be. The last tip I have um, is something that I didn't do and I fully regret it. So when I was touring campuses, learning about schools, you know, Googling, looking online, whatever. My biggest thing that I would always tell my parents is like, I don't know how I'm expected to choose a school because they all look amazing. It was like, how could I possibly narrow it down when I have so many great options? You have to think about it this way. 
schools are selling a product per se. They want to make money. Of course, they're going to illustrate their school in the best light possible. They're going to put their best foot forward. You're never going to see on a website or on a tour, the freshman dorms kind of suck or food isn't great. So my tip for this is if you're, you're stuck like I was thinking, all these campuses are great, how could I possibly choose? Contact current students who go to whatever college it is that you're thinking about and ask them for their honest opinion. I think people underestimate how willing people would be to really help you out and talk to you like over email or whatever it may be. So contact people and ask them, say, hey, I just wanna know about your personal experience. Is there anything you don't like about campus? Or ask them a more targeted question. And yeah, just reach out to people who go there to get the honest answer to your questions. Because if you ask the admissions people or you only go off of what the college shows you, of course it's gonna look like a great school um, because like I said earlier, no school is out here saying, here are the negatives about us. And of course not everyone is gonna to respond to you who you reach out to, but if you reach out to like five people, chances are at least one of them hopefully will get back to you. And I really feel like that will give you the honest insight that you need when making a decision. I highly doubt there's going to be a school where the students say, there's absolutely nothing I dislike about this school. Like, there's always going to be something that a student can tell you that is maybe more negative about the school. And then from there, you can narrow down your options. Those were my six tips. I really hope those were helpful. If you have any questions or comments or want to speak further about things, comment below in the comment section or DM us on Instagram. And from there, we can give you our emails or whatever it is that you might need. And please leave suggestions for other videos because we have a list going of suggested videos and we're going through them and we will try to get to them all. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.